first up, we got an old hair trend that might be a popping back up. You heard me, writers at Allure want to bring the poof back of the early 2000s. I mean, here, check out some poofs from yesteryear. Paris, uh -huh. Beyonce, a Lindsay. And then you've got a Jessica Alba, Mary Kate, a Reese. And I was a poofer. Yes, you were. Oh yeah. So will you bring the poof back? I would, you know what? I have to say, actually, the poof is extremely flattering to the face. Yeah. Um, there's a reason that women do it. It's because it's like an instant facelift. Um, it's very elongating, mm -hmm. very flattering. And we've actually got a special guest on Zoom joining us. She's rocked a poof. You've also seen her in movies like 22 Jump Street. And she's fantastic on that wonderful show, Greek. She's on the Carmichael Show, and now she's in the upcoming Stars series, Run the World. Take a look at this. Ola's mother wants Branzino for the fish entree. Mm, I love Branzino. Uh, no, you don't. You think you love Branzino because the chefs always serve it as a special, and people who don't know better let other people dictate to them what's actually special in life. And because waiters are always referring to it as a um, European sea bass, people get distracted by the fact that in terms of taste and flavor, it's just glorified tilapia. <laughs> Amber Stevens West, thank you for coming to the show. Hi, Amber. Hello. How are you guys? Great. <laughs> thank oh, you... you so much for coming. Oh, it's my pleasure. So we, we got to know, Amber, are you pro poof? You know, like Drew was saying, like the poof can be very flattering, but I feel like most women were doing it just here and then leaving the rest of the hair down. And that was not a good look. And I feel like the reason we all started doing that was because we all had bad bangs and we just needed to clip them back. I mean, that's certainly- You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, tell us about Run the World. It's four girlfriends in Harlem. I'm getting strong Sex in the City vibes. Right. There's a lot to be compared. I mean, it's four women, we're in New York, but you know, it's more for like a new generation. Sex in the City was for its time and it was about dating and our show is more for like the modern woman and we're not so focused on like how to get a man and how to keep a man. We're, mm. you know, more about like our girlfriend and our friendship and sisterhood and, you know, picking each other up when we fall and making fun of each other and, I, you know, growing. Well, I'll be tuning in. Yeah, if, consider me sold. Yeah, I'm exactly. in. <laughs> Way to pitch it. Okay, Amber, are you ready to hit some headlines with us? Let's do it. Let's do it. Rossi, take it away. All right, we've got a story about the joys of air travel with babies. <laughs> Have you ever been on a plane and someone walking in with like a newborn? Oh yeah, and mm -hmm. I know what they felt because normally I would stare and be like, oh no. But then? And then I was the one with the baby. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, uh, now uh, you, Amber, you're, you made a big announcement, right? I've got an, a second child on the way. Yes, so, congratulations! Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Congrats. Well, then you're going to relate to this, whether you've you know been that person who like, oh no, a baby on a plane, or you've been the person bringing a baby on the plane. This story from Upworthy. Uh, check it out. It's a TikTok posted by a mom named Jonna Gleason. She and her husband, they were on the plane with their baby, and they were struggling. And you know, it was seventh month old, was having a full down melt down on the plane. But then a stranger across the aisle, rather than like being mad, offered to hold the baby. So they handed the baby over and just like that, instantly calm. What do you think about this? Have you ever had that moment where your baby was crying and a stranger's the only one that can calm down? I haven't yet been in that situation, but I have certainly been on the plane with a crying baby and felt really sorry for the parents that are having to deal with it. I mean, before you have kids, it's very easy to eye roll and be like, oh, I'm on a plane with a baby. Oh. But I think now when you have a kid and you really know like how hard it's going to be, you have a lot of compassion for someone going through that. I mean, I've been on the plane where the flight attendants just jump in and they hold the baby and Aww. you know, it, it takes a village. It really does. It does. And, and I would allow anyone to just hold my baby for a second if she was freaking out, of course, please help me. 
Yeah, yeah, let's all try to be more like that woman. Exactly. Yes. Deal? All right, well, I want both of your takes on this one. A writer at Pure Wow says that she and her husband improved their connection and even cut down on fights by using the half glass of wine technique. The mm. idea came from her therapist and it's simple. Schedule a half glass of wine with your partner every night and when you sit down to play catch up, the only rule is that you can't talk logistics or to do is just focus on each other, okay? Amber, you're married to actor Andrew West. So what do you think of this? And Ross, I want to know what you and Wellington are going to think. Amber, you first. I'm, this is brilliant. I think it's a great idea. This is how we got through the pandemic. And I can't wait to do it again when this person gets out of my body. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I think it's so important to make that time to connect. My only problem with this half glass of wine challenge. It's not enough. Can we a half bottle of wine? <laughs> Hello. I totally agree. Yeah. That, I mean, I, it is, though, like so important to sit across from each other and to catch up on your day. Not to talk about the bills or the schedule or something, but like, you know, how do you feel today? What happened? To just connect purposefully. I think having those rules about just like not talking about triggers, mm. um, things that trigger, the only problem is, is if you get to that whole bottle of wine and then you start talking of triggers, that's a whole other article. Uh, yeah. Ross, your story. Yeah, but if, yeah. But it can also be a whole lot of fun if you finish that bottle of wine, too. As long as you don't talk about the triggers. Yeah, leave the triggers at home. <laughs> um, okay, next, we're going to expand our vocabulary. I love this. We're going to learn a brand new word. It is the latest term that all the youngins, all the kids are using on the Internet. And we are cool. The New York Times reports the word chuggy. It means something out of style or off trend or not cool anymore. It can be applied to a person or a thing. No, Drew, you are not chuggy. Am I? I hope I'm not chuggy. You're cool. But it can be a person or a thing. Um, it's, it's like in the eye of the beholder. So, for example, some of the things that have been deemed chuggy, um, we have a chuggy mood board. They say frappuccinos are chuggy. They're kind of done. Uh, the uh, the pool flamingo floaty. Oh, come that on. That was all over Instagram a couple years ago. Apparently, it's chuggy. Uh, uh oh, Drew, they say, they say Uggs are chuggy. Don't you even touch my Uggs. I will stick one of those Uggs where the, you know, never mind. I have to agree with you, Uggs are not chuggy. So, uh, but we are not chuggy. No, I'm not chuggy. Well, I refuse. I refuse to be. Yeah, but I'm going to try to start saying it, trying to make it happen. Well, Amber Stevens West, I am so grateful that you came here with your mad style, your gorgeous head to toe look, and your fabulous new show, Run the World, which premieres May 16th on Stars. I think it's going to be a smash hit. Yes.